Welcome, Dr. Epic here. And what we're going to explore in this module are American ruins, race riots, political corruption, economic decline, and how things fall apart. We're going to follow that outline right up above, so that should serve as a guide to your notes, because we are going to the ruins of the late great city of Detroit. We're going to very briefly look at what happened to Detroit, but more importantly, we're going to look at how Detroit is slowly turning into an abandoned archaeological site. We're going to look at C transforms, we're going to look at N transforms, and we're going to look at the transformation of a living city to an archaeological ruin in America. Now, there is no question about the decline of Detroit. Detroit's decline is very well documented. Its collapse is very well apparent. You can see there on the upper left the decline of Detroit, which at its height had almost 2 million people. And this year is set to drop below 670,000, making it a, a very kind of a medium to smallish size city. It's smaller than Austin, Texas. Uh, and the decline of Detroit is has been quite rapid. The Detroit, the decline of Detroit has been quite comprehensive. At one point in time, one person was permanently leaving from Detroit every 22 minutes. Half of the street lights are now turned off permanently. The police do not patrol large sections of the city because no one lives there. And it is in a city in an advanced state of decay. And this is a city that probably could not withstand uh, a pair of shocks like 2020's uh, coronavirus or 2020's racial riots. The future of Detroit looks very grim. So students always ask me, like, like, what happened to Detroit? How did it go from the center of American industrial, you know, industry? You know, it made tanks that won World War II. How do you go from one of the most economically and culturally vibrant cities in the United States to this blighted urban wasteland? And the answer is, is quite complex, and it's much more complex than I can really give an adequate treatment here. I will just very, very quickly say that there are essentially three main reasons that Detroit proceeded to fall apart in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s and up into the 21st century. And the three main reasons are, uh, one, a series of major racial riots in the 1960s and the inability of city government to suppress the riots, the inability of the police to clamp down on the riots. A lot of the police simply walked off the job or resigned or took better jobs elsewhere. And this started a general collapse of the city, you know, into lar into basically crime, into corruption. And in no one is willing to like rebuild businesses burned down in a racial riots when you can just move 10 miles away and open the same business in a nice pleasant suburb. Uh, the second reason Detroit really fell apart was uh, an over-reliance on the auto industry. They thought that the American car industry was going to be this goose that lays golden eggs from now until the end of time. They thought, well, we don't need these little businesses. We don't need these little mom and pop shops. We've got the car industry and we're gonna stick by the auto industry and the auto industry is gonna stick by Detroit. And the auto industry did not stick by Detroit. Uh, as soon, during the, the auto reorganizations in the 1980s, a lot of the car companies just left. Uh, Detroit is too expensive to do business with. The unions uh, make it too expensive to build cars there. And why build a auto, why build an auto plant in a crime-ridden, corrupt, expensive city like Detroit? And you have to rebuild a factory anyway to make new cars. Build it in South Carolina, where you don't have any of these problems. Uh, and that's what a lot of the car companies did. So the goose that they thought was going to lay these golden eggs flew away in the late 1980s. And the third reason Detroit declined was, well, you know, city corruption. And that guy in the upper left, uh, Coleman Young, the man the Wall Street Journal called the man who killed Detroit. Uh, Coleman Young was a spectacularly corrupt mayor. He built this intensely corrupt political machine that drove away voters that he didn't think would support him. The middle class fled the city. Coleman Young didn't think he needed them because he didn't think they would vote for him anyway. Uh, and as the white middle class left in, in white flight, 
Uh, what Coleman Young didn't expect is that the African-American middle class followed them. Uh, the same economic corruption and criminal factors that drove away uh, white Americans from Detroit, the white American middle class from Detroit, also drove away middle class people of every ethnicity. And then the workers, the people working in these auto factories lost their jobs and moved away. And Detroit just kind of started imploding on itself. And even after Coleman Young died, uh, after being mayor for like 30 years, uh, this corrupt political machine that he built stayed in place. And the result was, you know, a long sequence of corruption in the fire department, corruption in the police department, corruptions in the mayor's office. There's Kwame Kilpatrick, the hip hop mayor of uh, Detroit, on his way to federal uh, prison uh, following uh, his corruption charges. So basically, this is how Detroit fell apart. This is how Detroit collapsed. And this is how Detroit became the largest public bankruptcy in American history. The entire city declared itself bankrupt in 2013 and has been had to enter into a series of receivership programs run by the state of Michigan. Not run very effectively by the state of Michigan, I should point that out. And even now, Detroit itself remains on state and federal assistance uh, for life support. And we don't know how generous the state and the federal government's going to be going into the 2020s. And if that lifeline gets cut, Detroit is done. Uh, and don't take my word for it. If you're interested in the ruins of Detroit, if you're interested in, you know, what exactly happened to this once great American city, I, I urge you to explore the literature on the subject. People have written these fantastic books uh, about the collapse of Detroit, about the last days of Detroit, about Detroit crime, about Detroit corruption, about, you know, economic oppression, and about the collapse of urban society inside the city of Detroit. Now, the, I, I've shown you the picture of the decline of the population, but it, that doesn't really get into people's heads the, the scale of Detroit's decline. To do that, you have to look at something like a map. Here is a map of Detroit. Everything you see in that kind of greenish brown color, everything you see has been abandoned. So as you can see, large parts of Midtown, large parts of the area, uh, around the downtown area have been completely abandoned. There's whole blocks and blocks and blocks of just completely abandoned structures. No one lives there anymore. It's not patrolled by police. If you call the fire department, they're not going to show up. And the, the only people you are going to meet out there are up to no good. Um, and in fact, the pol a police chief about four or five years ago in Detroit, a reporter asked him, uh, you know, what should, what should citizens do if they're confronted by criminal elements in these kind of unpatrolled areas of Detroit? And the police chief said they should exercise their Second Amendment rights and, and carry a weapon to defend themselves. That was the official response. Detroit. So everything in brown, everything in sort of greenish brown is, has been uh, abandoned. Uh, the, the, the sort of gray areas are occupied at least for now. Um, we don't know what it's going to be going, going into the future. But if you don't trust maps, let's actually look at photographs. Now we're going to get into the ruins of Detroit itself. Here's where the ruin of one of those big auto plants. And I want you to look at this picture. And I want you to look at this picture and in your notes, write down what post-abandonment processes that you actually see. Do you see a C transform? Do you see an N transform? I can see at least two uh, right now. Write these down in your notes as this building falls apart and as this abandoned structure becomes the archaeological record for some future archaeologists to excavate, you know, the ruins of Detroit. What are the C transforms? What are the N transforms? Here we have another image. This is another structure in Detroit in a process of collapse. And again, I said this earlier, uh, but here I'll just show you. Uh, when buildings collapse, they don't fall down all at once. It's not like there's a big building and then it, 
it suffers some massive structural failure and the whole thing collapses. Rather, this is what happens to buildings. They fall apart in stages, a bit here, a bit there, the upper floors falling with the structural collapse, moving and burying the lower portions of the structure. And look at this image. Are there any C transforms? I can see one, there's the graffiti right up there on the water tower. Are there any N transforms? Oh, I can see two. There's the structural collapse itself. Uh, oh, yeah, probably caused by weather. As, as you know, the, the rain has gotten to the steel uh, structure of the building. Also, Detroit has kind of rough weather. It has very warm summers and extremely cold winters. And, and that, that sort of shift back and forth uh, throughout the year has just played havoc with these abandoned structures. Uh, they're just coming down in droves. So there's one end transform, the weather sort of collapsing portions of the buildings. The second end transform would be uh, those, those buildings, uh, the plants at the base of the building uh, that are sprouting up. They're going to leave a nice humic layer over that pile of dumped tires, which is itself a, a C transform. Their dumping of tires along the base of the building is going to create this kind of this tire midden underneath the layer of humus. And that's probably going to be buried as the rest of the structure comes down uh, sometime in the next 30 to, to 40 years. A concert hall. Here you go. The old Detroit concert hall. Uh, and you can see it's coming down. Many of these buildings are simply in such an advanced state of decay that they cannot actually be saved. So all we can really do is, is kind of, kind of, observe the collapse that's going on like the that with that level of destruction on the roof this this building probably cannot be saved why should you there's nobody living around here uh but as you can see i can see at least two end transforms going on with this building one of them being of course the structural collapse itself sometimes these buildings often burst into flame so the flames can be nat the fires can be natural the fi fires could be you know set by looters or just burned. Let's not forget Detroit is the home of the old Devil's Night. Uh, when when uh, Devil's Night was when, uh, it's not a big deal anymore, but it was back in the 90s and 2000s when like gangs of youths would rampage through the, through the abandoned sections of Detroit, setting houses on fire one after the other. At any rate, I see at least two N transform, uh, one N transform and one C transform here. The N transform would be the structural collapse. And you can see down at the, in the hall, those are the bits of the ceiling that are coming down. And eventually, if nobody else does anything with this structure, the rest of that ceiling will come down. And the other C transform is the dumping of that old musical equipment. Uh, they mean that that's just garbage. They left it piled on one side of the hall. That's eventually going to rot. It's going to decay. And that's going to be buried by the structural collapse that's going to follow. Uh, here's the old music room at the Detroit, one of the Detroit high schools. Uh, and you can see, if we look at this image, like what's going to be there in 30 or 40 years? Pretty much everything organic is going to decay. What's not going to decay is the plastic, the metal. It'll corrode, but it might be preserved. Um, as the entire structure eventually falls down, what do you see here? Do you see a C transform? Do you see an N transform? Cogitate on this and write them down in your notes. What post-abandonment processes are going on in this photograph from the ruins of Detroit. Here's, a, here's, a, here's an old theater. This might actually be the old opera house again, but I don't exactly remember. And here we have uh, an, one of these elegant old art and culture buildings, uh, the opera house or the theater. And as you can see, there's more structural collapse coming down, probably an end transform. The stage itself is coming apart. And you can see how the structural collapse has actually buried a number of those seats. Um, and what's going to happen going into the future is the rest of that ceiling is going to come down. As a matter of fact, you can look and you can actually see sunlight coming through on, on the upper left. That means there's big holes in the ceiling. That means rain. That means snow. That means the elements are getting into this structure. And very soon, plants are, getting in, are going to begin to colonize uh, the interior uh, of this opera house. Now, this is actually really interesting. This is a C transform that we haven't seen so far. This is one of these sort of elegant cultural buildings 
but it's been repurposed. And repurposing is a C transform. What they've done is they've looked at this building and decided they can't, re the, the structure is solid, but it, nobody's gonna buy a ticket to see anything. So what they've done is they've just knocked down all the internal walls, poured asphalt over what was there, and turned it into a parking garage. A parking garage that is, that is not doing very good business. If you've only got one person using your parking garage, it's not gonna be, that's, that's not a good way to make money. So this building has actually been repurposed. That is a C transform. They've turned it from one thing into something else. Here is the old Detroit uh, uh, school book depository. Uh, and what happened is that obviously a fire swept through this building at some point, uh, impartially burning a lot of these old school books, burning a lot of these old city records. Uh, the building is poured concrete and steel. So the building itself is strong enough to have withstood the fire. But as you can see, all of that area, this is gonna be this huge layer of ash and midden and partially burned books that is going to form in the interior of this structure. And when eventually that structure comes down, uh, all of this is gonna be mixed together with the structural collapse. So that's my question to you. This layer of burned school books and ash, is that a C transform or is that an N transform? Think about that and put it in your notes. But let's move away from big civic buildings. Let's move into residential architecture. And here we have a building that's been set on fire at least once. And you can see the brick veneer has come off uh, the sides of this structure right up here. And when you look at this residential structure, I want you to piece this together. Do you see any C transforms? Do you see any N transforms? I can see a, an N transform right there. I can see a C transform there. I can see another N transform there. Sometimes addicts or the homeless will move into these old buildings with no electricity or heat. And sometimes they'll like start little fires or little campfires inside the structure to stay warm during these long uh, Michigan uh, winters. That's another type of use. That's another C transform, squatters. Uh, again, people might move in and rip out the copper, rip out the aluminum to be sold. In fact, Detroit has a recurring problem with these kind of gangs of, of looters, scavengers, recyclers, whatever you want to call them, breaking into these structures, ripping out copper, ripping out aluminum, doing basically the same thing that the Russian mob did uh, back in Pripyat. Now, Let's actually get some kind of scale of the decay of Detroit based on one of my favorite things, drone flights.
Shocking, sad, interesting. What sort of transforms did you see as that little robot flew over the city of Detroit? What seat were they C transforms? Were they N transforms? Write those down and maybe rewatch the video if you missed a few along the way. Now, there is a plan to save Detroit, okay? Um, when Detroit declared its municipal bankruptcy in 2013, uh, when, it, when it gained that state and federal lifeline of cash, when they appointed uh, a financial controller to sort of oversee the finances of Detroit, they did come up with an attempt to save the city. And that itself is going to change the archaeological record of the city itself. Uh, I, no one knows if the plan is actually going to be successful, but the plan has essentially two uh, components to it. One involves tearing down a lot of these old abandoned structures, just ripping them down, piling the debris uh, along the side of the road, piling it into trucks and taking it off to the municipal dump. And they're doing this right now. They're tearing down a lot of these old, old abandoned structures in Detroit, turning them into rubble and shipping them off to the municipal dump. So most of Detroit is in fact being converted to structural collapse and then thrown away. The second component to saving Detroit involves taking one of the few advantages that the city has left, which is all those streets, or they're all wired. They all have power. They all have uh, piping for water and sewage. They all have the, the electrical and water and power grids are already set up. So the plan is to take all of these areas, take all of the abandoned areas and restructure them for agriculture, hothouse agriculture. It's got access to power. It's got access to the city's water supply and basically turn the abandoned parts of Detroit into this tiny little hothouse agricultural community, growing vegetables, growing flowers, uh, growing tropical fruits indoors to feed Michigan uh, throughout the year. Now, whether, again, whether this idea works or not is anyone's guess, uh, especially given the, the economic and societal shocks of 2020, and especially given that the federal and state government do not have infinite patience or infinite money. But if you are an optimist, this is going to be the future of Detroit, agriculture. If you are a cynic, well, this is going to be the future of Detroit. Collapse, ruin, and a full entry into the archeological record. An abandoned ghost city, just like Pripyat. So what we're gonna do right now is we are going to do an exercise in how things fall apart. We're going to take an exercise in collapse. I'm going to take this theoretical structure right here and I'm going to model seven distinct post-abandonment events that are going to take place over the next 50 years. That are gonna, going to transform a house from abandonment to total collapse. And the way I did this and I want you to sort of watch very carefully what I'm going to do, because I'm probably going to probably going to have this option on the midterm. We're going to take a structure and we're going to destroy it over time. Here's my very simple sort of side view of the structure. And I'm going to I'm going to say take seven post abandonment processes and inflict them on this structure. So what I did is I got a coin and I said, Heads are a C transform and tails are an N transform. And I'm gonna flip the coin and whatever I get, that's what I'm gonna to apply to this structure. So here is the, the residential structure after abandonment. There it is and I flipped the coin and it came up heads. So I said the first C transform is going to be vandalism. Local gangs, local youths, or people with too much time on their hands, broke into the structure, they had spray cans, they put various crazy little slogans up, they drew a carrot, they drew a dude, uh, they put a little heart uh, right, right over there. So that is our first post-abandonment process, a C-transform vandalism. I flipped the coin again, it came up heads the second time. So my second 
C transform is going to be squatters. Squatters moved into the abandoned structure. And when they moved into the abandoned structure, the structure doesn't have water and power. I mean, it's not turned on. It's, you know, it's got access to it, but it's not turned on. So what these squatters did is in the front and one side of the house, they built a little campfire to keep them warm through the Detroit winter. That's going to be that little ashy lens right up there. And then they basically used the back of the house as a bathroom or as a trash dump, creating that squatter's midden on the left side of the structure. So we have graffiti structure. We have squatters who lived here for maybe a year or two. I flipped the coin again and I came up with heads for a third time, which means that our third post abandonment process is also going to be a C transform. And I said, well, what's some of the C transforms I've seen so far? Uh, looters. Looters came through the house. They ripped out the copper wires from the walls. They ripped out the aluminum. This is going to destabilize the structure. Uh, I mean, it's going to have, the walls are going to have big holes in them. The, the structure isn't going to be intact anymore. There's already been, you know, a campfire in the middle of it. And here's our structure, uh, let's say, 10 years after abandonment. This is what the building looks like. I then flipped the coin for a fourth time, and it finally came up tails. N, that's an N transform. Well, so what I decided was the building caught on fire. It was struck by lightning, or somebody flicked a lit cigarette in there, or for whatever reason, the fire burned. And it burned through the house. It brought down half of the structure. Again, structures don't collapse all at once. They collapse in stages. And it left this layer of burnt structural collapse on top of the old squatter's midden, on top of the fire pit of the squatters, and a little bit on the outside. And the building, as you can see right now, is getting in greater and greater. Uh, it's getting in worse and worse shape as we move through these post-abandonment processes. So I flipped a coin for the fifth time and it came up heads, which means it's gonna be a C transform. So what I decided is there's more dumping, that the people who are still living in this part of Detroit uh, are taking trash, they're taking their household garbage, and instead of having to pay to municipal trash to get it thrown away, or just throwing it in their own backyard, they just threw it into the abandoned structure next door. And the result is this big sort of survivor's midden, these sort of survivors who are living in the ruins of Detroit. And it's going to leave another huge layer that's going to rest on top of that burned structural collapse, which is itself on top of the remains from those squatters. And it started to encase the old lower parts of the architecture with that graffiti on it. So I flipped the coin for the sixth time and it came up tails. That means an N transform. So I decided, well, the building kind of uh, went through a collapse sequence, probably aided by fire. Um, so it's going to leave another layer of burned structural collapse because the building already caught on fire once, including right there in the middle, a huge portion of a brick wall that fell down in its entirety and has been, you know, sort of buried in an angle. Walls do that sometimes. So this is our sixth post-abandonment process. I then flipped a coin for the seventh and the last time, and it came up uh, tails again, which is an, another end transform. And I decided, well, let's sort of put our little Detroit structure to rest. Let's give it a nice humic layer. The building is, is largely left alone on the, on the plains of, of central Michigan. The plants move in, they colonize the collapsed abandoned structure. And what you're left with is this right here, a huge thick humic layer covering the remains of the structure with plants growing on it, plants growing around it. And all you can really know to tell that there was once a structure here is maybe a bit of rubble poking up between the bushes on one side, a little bit of brickwork poking out from, you know, the roots of, of small trees on the other. But if you didn't know that, if you didn't see those immediately, this would just look like another kind of funny shaped lump on the plains of central Michigan. This is all you'd have it. But if you took an, if you took uh, an archaeological excavation and you sliced right through that mound, you would get a stratigraphic drawing that looked pretty much like this. And there it is. Now, this is just a hypothetical example. It's just a silly little game. But as you can see, uh, this is what actually happens to structures as they fall apart. You go from an abandoned structure right there 
to a grass-covered mound on the landscape right there. With every single post-abandonment process, every single depositional event leaving its trace in the archaeological record. And when, if, when future archaeologists study the ruination of Detroit and they study the collapse of this American city, they're going to do that type of stuff right there. They're going to study the sequence of depositional events behind each of these structures and then attempt to piece those together in an attempt to recreate past human behavior. And this is kind of a silly exercise. This is kind of a fun exercise. And I might ask you to do this in the future as you sort of build your own hypothetical structure and play this little heads or tails game, watching the building fall apart through a sequence of C transforms and N transforms, through a sequence of post-abandonment processes, through a sequence of different depositional events that created the final archaeological record. Now, again, I don't want to rag on Detroit. Detroit is the largest municipal bankruptcy in American history, and it is the largest municipal collapse in American history. But little things happen like this all the time. All sorts of tiny little towns come and go. And in fact, Texas is rather notorious for its collection of tiny little abandoned townships or forgotten villages or whole towns that once existed in the 19th century that have blown away. And sometimes there's towns right now where, you know, it's really sad. There's, there might not be anyone in these little rural Texas townships under the age of 50. And it's only a matter of time before some of these little towns, you know, blow away entirely. And if you are, if you have an adventurous spirit, you can actually get on these websites, get in your vehicle and visit these abandoned ghost towns that are scattered all across Texas, these lonely little ruins uh, just off the main, off the old highways uh, that snake across the state. And indeed, I'm engaged in uh, the excavation of, of a ghost town, not in Texas, but we uh, currently have plans to archeologically investigate a rather famous Mississippi ghost town called Rodney, Mississippi, which, is, uh, which was abandoned in the 1930s and 40s, uh, it was built around 1820, 1830. No one knows exactly how old the city is. If it's built on an if it's built on an old Native American site, or if it's built on a reputed French uh, colonial town in the region. But we're going to move forward with these investigations over time, and hopefully, we'll get a really good idea of the type of archaeology that can be done in these ghost towns, in these abandoned cities, whether it's Rodney, Mississippi, whether it's a Texas ghost town, whether it's in the, the ruined city of Detroit or in radioactive Pripyat. So we, we're taking these modern ideas and we're taking these modern depositional processes. Now that we know how sites come together, now that we know how cities fall apart, we're gonna take our knowledge and apply it in the next section to an abandoned city of the classic Maya, a place I've been working at for about, um, for almost 20 years. And in the next section, we'll explore this ancient jungle city. And I will see you there. <laughs>